Okay, so the first thing you want to do is draw a polyline around the area that phase two is going to be built from. Uh, you can see that I didn't have to spend too much time up here, but uh, down here I had to essentially snap to the ends of phase one so that I would tie phase two in to phase one. And not again to do training, but the command would be erased by closed polyline. And you would pick this guy here and erase inside. Now you want to erase outside. And just type in all. And at this point, there is the area that you would draw up. And I'm not beginning to do training, but I'm just going to show you the amount of work necessary to create the barrier lines for making a proper contour map. You can see that I brought in the barrier lines that I drew to create these contours. And if I go up to Inquiry and do Drawing Inspector, that I have you no, know, I have to elevate now the curves after I draw the 3D polylines. And there's the real boundary that I create to tie in phase two to phase one. This boundary right here was just to erase outside that area. So at this point, I just want to zoom up on this drawing and show you that with these spot elevations, I have essentially, if I go to Inquiry here and do Drawing Inspector, and you can see I have Display Layer Name, Elevation, Point Data, I'll turn that off. And right now, I have actually created 343 point, if I pick there, and come over here, 340, 374. Here is 374. Go to the icons right there, and if you look down at the bottom there, Right here, when I put myself in one of those there, it says 374.39. So you can see that I've uh, meticulously um, created spot shots at all the spot elevations, well, or in this case, the contours. And if I go up to command here, edit assigned polyline elevations, window up here, you can see that in red, we're holding the elevations. There's 373, 372, and these are interpolated elevations along here. There's 371. You can see the elevations right there, 370, 373, and so forth. So um, meticulously, I have gone in and created spot vertices for all the curb lines in yellow to be in 3D where phase two is. Now, I want to do Isolate right here. And want to grab my 3D entities that I want to contour, and of course my perimeter. And that is what I'm going to use to create my 2D, or 3D, I mean, phase two. And go up to surface, do triangulating contour. And we're gonna write a tin file. And here I'm just gonna create a new one called phase two hyphen uh, FX for finish grade. Do save. And what I wanna show you is that I'm doing two tenths of a contour with one foot. Uh, contours and I pick OK and it says select inclusion perimeter, hit return, no exclusion perimeter, type in CP and I'm just going to and hit return. You can see it creates a tin file and what I look for is to see any discrepancies. Why do I do tenth of a foot contours? You know, it shows me some of the uh, discrepancies here, but again, uh, if I go look at one and zoom to it and zoom in, 
um, 0.056. I don't have the time to fix these. They're all very, very, very small. And I can set the, um, no, that one should be zoom to, zoom in. And still, it has not affected my contours, so it looks just fine. Vertical edge, there's a big one there, zoom to. And still has not affected my, let's zoom out, has not affected the look of my contours. And I could draw one there to fix it if I want to. And a little bad tin X. I could go in there and see what the discrepancy is, but my contours look just fine. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to layer off and just pick one of the tin lines. And I have two tenths of a foot contours, so you can see there's 364, 365. And I have a slight discrepancy there, but again, yeah, there's a walk right there, and that's why it's doing that right there. There's a retaining wall, or a small little wall right there. And that was defined just by the contours. There's one again over there. But essentially, I don't see any um, green um, proposed contour or one-footers. There's about the worst one right there over the entire site. And you can see that uh, that's pretty much... Um, Right there, see the change with the slope of the road, and the contours look pretty good. And what I've done with these barrier lines in the BARP layer that I created, I essentially drew 3D polylines to force not just the one-foot contours to um, snag along the proposed contours that were given to me, but I actually contour within two-tenths of a contour just to see how smooth they look in between the one-foot contours. And that's just a trick of most people that make machine control files. They want to see what the two-tenth of a foot contours look like. You can see I, that's the, you kind of expect that type of contour. And I drew in all these 3D polylines to essentially create that until I got it right. So it took several hours to go over this job to create all these 3D polylines right here to draw up the, the contours with two-tenths of a foot contour drawn to see things uh, draw correctly. Of course, there's my catch basins that I drew in 3D polylines to get that appearance right there. Okay, now that we've created that a tin file, go down to Surface Viewer, and you can see there it is. I want to tie this in my proposed. So I come down here to 3D Data, and another real quick check just to uh, show you is that if I go to first right here, go to first, and I just want to go across right here, see what it looks like. There's my curb, my first curb, and you can see you can see as I drag my cursor along there, you can see the slope of the road and the slope here come down and there's a little low spot that I created going in between two catch basin uh, by the field. So you can adjust the alignment here, pick in the middle, and you can just drag it along just to see if you have a two well-defined curbs. I think I do, or I know I do, because of the uh, contour, the proposed contour. So to combine the two, you just go to Triangulate File Utilities, Phase 1 and Phase 2, that is, Load Tin File. Here is Phase 1, Complete. And you can see there it all is. And then do Next. And you go to Merge Tin. And you want to, Second Tin is not within the First Tin, but you want to wipe clean where Second Tin is and combine it to the First Tin. And you pick here. And there is the, oh, yeah, that's the tin that you want to merge. Pick that one, and you can see there it's merging the two together. In red is the phase one, phase two is in green, and where the two tins had to combine is in yellow. So we're going to save this tin right there, and I'll just call this uh, phase one hyphen phase two hyphen FX for finish. Grade or FG, how about that? FG for finished grade. Do save 
and that tin is drawn, uh, not drawn, it is saved, and I've saved it now. Let's go to LDEL, and And I think I turned off triface, but let's add triface. And these two layers. I don't want to grab my proposed grid. And there's triface and just pick OK. And they're gone. So, doesn't look like much, does it? Uh, in white is phase one, and uh, in green and yellow there is phase two, and I've combined the two. Now what you want to do is go back to surface and do contour from tin file to check to see if your two merged surfaces are work just fine. And we're going to do contour interval, again point two, one foot is the index, triangulate, and it says use exclusion. It doesn't really matter, we're just going to use a tin file. It says use inclusion perimeter, I don't have to pick one, I'm just going to pick the phase one, phase two, finish grade tin file right there. Pick open and, and then we just stop for a little while and it will draw not just the one foot contours but the two tenth of a foot contours and we'll then review them to see if they match phase one and phase two's contours where the two combine. Okay and there you have it and we'll just window up in this road right here and again let's freeze the uh, tin. It's a little tough to see the contours underneath, but, um, and there you have it, the, uh, oh, we have to fix this right here, and fix this, and fix this, and looking at the contours right here, we've got to fix this, so you can see the painstaking, of course, there's uh, areas of uh, problems right here, and to show you that uh, it took a couple hours to essentially then clean up the drawing so that the two would, uh, that is phase one and phase two, where they the two meet, obviously, and this is just to highlight that even after phase two was done correctly and phase one was done correctly, the two drawings when they were contoured together didn't quite match properly. So I had to go in and clean those up. So let's do LDEL. Pick OK, and I'm now going to contour from the Enter, Enter, no inclusion, exclusion, and select the, there's the tin file that I created after several hours of fixing just the uh, two areas that need to be spliced together so that they contour properly. Again, you're hoping that the surface model that you generate is within an eighth of an inch of what has been designed for every square foot of your site. And obviously, if you're designing with two tenths of a foot contour and you only have one foot contours and spot elevations, it's not always clear how things, you know, where things are going to be graded and where they're going to drain, but you may actually use some creativity on how the two tenth of a foot contours will be drawn. And if I come up here, you can see this area now is solved, is fixed. This is actually correct right here. There is a pit right here. Um, this is a road right here. This is a sidewalk coming up this road right up here. Let's turn off the uh, tin file. And there's the uh, ball field up here. There's a little drainage area over here. Um, this is the road. You can see how the two tenth of the contours, everything contoured correctly here. And there's no bobbles anymore along the side here. And pretty much that is phase one complete and phase two now complete. And this again, is not a training movie. It's just to show the degree of expertise and how meticulous one has to be to create surface models for all the phases and steps within the construction process for the outdoor grading. 
And if I go up to view, 3D viewer, and this is a viewer for 3D AutoCAD entities. And we'll maximize this and go to three to one. Let's go to five to one. And I think that's a little too up down. And you can see by stopping right here, you can see here's phase two. And if I spin this guy, now if you look at it in this way, there's the field, there's the drainage areas, there's the road coming around. And, and you can see there's phase two, there's the proposed road, phase one, here's the building on the bottom of the pads, and the parking lot area is contoured correctly. And that shows you the partial steps, uh, not all the meticulous, time-consuming steps to draw each 3D polyline and to elevate every curb line so that you have the proper elevations to then make a tin file from. But it certainly gets the point across that from the late 90s till now, machine control and the creating of 3D service models has become quite a art or science or combination of art and science to essentially create these surface models that can then be uploaded into machine control for doing as productively as possible earthwork in the field.